Hello again, I am surprisingly back again, and today I thought I would try doing a perfume tag video. The tag that I've been enjoying watching other people do recently is the perfume collection tag. I don't think it's particularly new, but I have just been watching a lot of these recently, so I thought I would give it a shot. Um, I have placed the questions down in the description in case you also want to do this tag because I would also like to watch yours if you did. So let's go ahead and just jump right in. First question is, what is the newest fragrance in your collection? So the one that I have purchased most recently, so newest to me, is from Hermes. It's Eau de Rhubarb Écarlate. It's an eau de cologne, part of Hermes's Cologne's collection, which is a line of, I think they're meant to be simple, refreshing scents for summer. A lot of them are citruses. This particular one is pretty much what it says on the bottle. It's it's rhubarb. I think there are also red berries, musk, but pretty much this is, this is about rhubarb. It is very tart, very crisp, very juicy, very natural smelling. Something that's just really enjoyable to wear in the summertime. So if by newest you want to talk about the most recently released perfume, for me that would be Shalimar Souffle de Lumière. This was released in 2018. Souffle means breath of Shalimar, so this whole line is sort of meant to be airier version of Shalimar. I think they're all meant to be easier to wear. Uh, they take away some of the challenging notes from Shalimar, the sort of rubbery, smoky notes. I know they're challenging for me, but I really enjoy the Souffle line, and I have all three. So there's the Souffle de Parfum, uh, Souffle Intense, and then this one, which is even, even lighter and airier and brighter, so breath of light of Shalimar. So this is sort of a bright springtime version of this line. It's got a really strong bergamot note at the opening that's almost verging on bitter. It goes into some sweet flowers, jasmine, ylang ylang, um, and then it pulls into that Shalimar, slightly powdery, slightly old-fashioned resiny vanilla. So not too sweet, and then you've got sort of this brightness from the floral and the citrus. The next question is, what is the oldest fragrance in your collection? So the one that I've had the longest is from Balenciaga. It's Balenciaga Paris. I've told this story before. This is the perfume that was the first one that I bought when I started to get interested in fragrances as an adult. I was in a department store, sort of wandering aimlessly, didn't know what I liked, and the Flora Botanica bottles caught my eye. They're very graphic and sort of mod pop art design, very eye-catching. So, I went over there, sampled Flora Botanica, and then also tried Paris. This is a non-sweet violet perfume, so it's very much more like the flower violet as opposed to like a violet candy. It is green from the violet leaf, and then there's some carnation in there. It gets a little bit powdery, but not too much. I find it a little bit cold sometimes. It's a little bit prim, um, and I don't I used to really like it a lot, but I just, I don't really wear it anymore. I don't think I've worn it for a few years, really. But I do enjoy keeping this as sort of a souvenir of, you know, the one that started it all. And also, this is one of my favorite bottle designs. Um, it's simple, but interesting, too. So it's got, you know, an asymmetrical shape to it. Asymmetry makes it sort of modern and then you've got these details that are sort of vintage like this crackle top and then the collar here is sort of like vintage plastic, vintage Melmac. So keeping it around for sentimental reasons and also aesthetic purposes. Then the bottle that is the oldest by production composition date is Dolce & Gabbana Sicily. This was released in 2003, and I don't think it was on the market for very long. This is notable for having a strong banana note, which makes it sort of unusual. It opens with a pretty strong soapiness, soapy aldehydes, um, and then it dries down to something that's really warm, creamy, banana, honeysuckle, vanilla. It's got this quality where it sort of feels like it's like your skin, but better. Like your skin just smells really delicious and sweet, just gentle and, and hugging your skin in a way that is really enjoyable. The next question, what is the most expensive fragrance in your collection? That would be this guy, Tom Ford Lost Cherry. 
I think this is super overpriced. This is $350 for the 50 ml bottle. I did not spend my own $350 on this. I had a Sephora gift card. Uh, so that's really the only reason why I bought this. I don't think I ever would have bought it if I didn't have a gift card or, um, you know, if I had to pay full price. It is a really nice cherry scent. So it opens with like a really juicy, syrupy, maraschino cherry, kind of boozy, sort of amaretto almond notes in there. And then it dries down, it becomes slightly vanilla-ish, some tonka bean. It's nice. I, I don't think it's $350 for 50 mils nice, but it is nice. A nice version of cherry that I don't think smells like cough syrup or cough drops, which is an issue that I have with a lot of cherry perfumes. So cherry, almond, amaretto, or if you really, really want a cherry scent and want to spend $350 for it, there you go. Then the next question is, what is the most affordable fragrance that you have? Um, this is almost cheating because I didn't really buy this to wear. I bought it more for nostalgia purposes but it is Elizabeth Arden Sunflowers. I think I paid about $11 for this big 100 ml bottle. Um, so if you compare it to Lost Cherry, uh, the math is this comes out to about $7 per mil versus this is about 11 cents per mil. So this is about 60 times more expensive than this one. Is it 60 times better than this one? You know, that's up to you. So this is kind of a classic, very popular 90s perfume. It's just incredibly nostalgic for me. It makes me think of being in department stores with my friends on the weekend, hanging around the mall with no place to go, um, shopping for sunflower scrunchies. It's got kind of that 90s mishmash of like a million fruits and flowers where you can't exactly pick anything out. Um, if anything, I would say maybe like a cantaloupe. Cantaloupe, slightly peachy, sort of floral, but nothing that I could really identify. I mean, I think, I think I struggle to pick out individual notes here, not just because that's sort of this genre of perfume, um, but just because I have such a strong scent memory associated with it that it kind of overloads my brain and prevents me from getting anything objective out of it. But Sunflowers, very cheap. The next question is, what is your favorite easy reach? So I have two that kind of tie, they depend a little bit on the weather. So for slightly colder weather, it's Signorina by Salvatore Ferragamo. And then for warmer weather, really this one is pretty versatile for seasons, it's Versace Bright Crystal. So um, I guess, this slightly edges out the Signorina because I wouldn't wear this one in super hot weather, whereas this one would do okay. But these are really my two favorites there. I have repurchased both of them, which I can't say for that many perfumes, but I love both of these. Neither of them is particularly interesting or groundbreaking, but they, you know, they're easy to wear. They aren't too much, so I never really regret putting them on. Um, I hate when you, you know, you put something on, you go to work, and then it ends up being not what you're in the mood for, and so instead of being like a little boost throughout the day, it's just kind of a slightly negative distraction that keeps coming back. That doesn't happen ever with these. They both last for a whole work day and have good but not obnoxious sillage, so they probably won't annoy your coworkers. They're low key enough that they won't distract me, but if I do catch a whiff, it's just sort of like I'm reminded like, ah. Oh, I like this. Bright Crystal, very popular mainstream designer fragrance, but I do really love this one. It is watery, yuzu, pomegranate, peony, lotus. It just feels fresh and clean and like you stepped out of the shower and I think it just smells nice and sometimes you just want to smell nice. So Signorina, this is kind of a fruity gourmand perfume. I always like to describe this as sort of fizzy and zesty combined with a panna cotta note. So it's got this red currant and pink pepper opening that for me makes gives it sort of a bubbly, fizzy, kind of tickly quality that keeps it lively and I think keeps it from becoming too sweet. 
panna cotta if you haven't had it. It's a, a creamy custardy, custardy dessert, sort of like flan or creme brulee. So creamy vanilla, maybe a little bit of burnt sugar there, um, but not overly sweet or syrupy. There are supposedly some flowers in here in the heart, rose, and I think even jasmine, but I really don't think of this as a floral perfume at all. It's just, you know, that zesty, fruity, panna cotta combination. There's also patchouli in the base of this, but I think it's safe for patchouli haters. I don't really care for patchouli, but this doesn't bother me at all. Next question, which is your favorite bottle design out of your collection? So this was a really difficult one for me to answer, and um, I think I could have chosen so many. There are so many different types of bottles that I love, and the bottle designs are one of my favorite parts of the perfume experience. So the one I ended up choosing, and this is sort of a surprise to me, is Yves Saint Laurent Cinema. So this is a pretty simple shape bottle overall, simple cap simple design. Um, also, this is a 50 mil size. I feel like 50 mil is usually like the most, the best proportion of bottle design. So that's my favorite size to use. Um, but yeah, so it's a pretty simple and minimalist bottle design, but then it just really captures this feeling of like red carpets and flash bulbs going off, your name and lights, Hollywood, movie stars. It's like rich and sparkling and golden. So I think it does such an amazing job of communicating the message and the spirit of this perfume. So really great match between the design of the bottle and the name, the branding, and the scent itself. It's like a sparkling, rich, golden, <laughs> golden perfume. Um, so everything fits perfectly. It's got tangerine in the opening, bubbly jasmine, and then uh, mixed with vanilla and amber. Next question is, what is the smallest bottle in your collection? The smallest non mini bottle that I have is this. It's a little 15 mil of Givenchy Organza Indecence. This is the original formula, um, I think from the early 2000s, maybe even the late 90s. They re-released this a few years ago in a very different sort of bottle shape, so it doesn't have this um, dress woman design. In my collection video, I said that this version and the modern reformulation were pretty much identical, but that's actually not very accurate because I forgot that this one doesn't have the kind of citrus opening that the modern one does. So the newer Organza Indecence has this kind of slightly bitter, pithy, orange or tangerine in the opening, um, and this one doesn't have citrus at all. The opening is kind of a wood scent, so there is that difference. However, I do think once you get past the opening, the two are very, 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 very similar and hard to tell apart. So I was wrong on the opening, but both are very beautiful. This is one of my favorite cold weather vanilla perfumes. It is a milky, spiced, vanilla that's not too sweet. It's really huggable and warm and ambery, a little bit powdery, but not in kind of a dusty powder, sort of like a creamy powder, like milk powder, if that makes sense. Um, this is really, really beautiful in both formulations. I know there are people who love the old one and don't like the new one, but I think they are both lovable. And then the tiniest non-spray dabber bottle that I have is this mini perfume. Um, I don't know if it's literally the smallest, but it feels the smallest because it's so thin. This is Lulu Guinness by Lulu Guinness. It's just a very adorable vintage looking bottle design. Perfume inside I don't know very well yet since I just got it, but um, I think the main flower is Lily of the Valley and then maybe some Lily and then a bunch of other, bunch of other flowers, but not sweet, pretty green, a little bit sharp and clean smelling. Um, very, very, very adorable mini bottle. Getting crowded, not very aesthetically pleasing <laughs> array of perfumes here, but I think it's more interesting than looking at the plain white screen. So we'll leave it here. Life is messy. The next question, what is the biggest bottle in my collection? By volume, the biggest would be um, from the Aqua Allegoria line, I've got a number of these 125 ml bottles, so that is the biggest. I've got 
three in the 125 mil size from Aqua Allegoria. I've got this Bergamot Calabria, and then I have Florinymphaea and Neurolia Bianca. Bergamot Calabria is the newest Aqua Allegoria that I have, and this is really fantastic. It is super zesty, super sharp, energizing citrus. Um, I've never had a bergamot fruit, so for me, my brain goes more to lime, but it really sort of smells like cutting up a very juicy, tart, sour lime, um, but bergamot, I guess. So there are other notes in here, but it, it's just all about that juicy, zesty, refreshing bergamot. So highly recommend if you're looking for a nice hot weather perfume that is not too sweet and is just very very refreshing, very energizing, very zesty. It'll pump you up. <laughs> That's a weird thing to say. And then this is not technically the largest by volume or anything like that. This is 100 ml, but this is maybe the heftiest bottle that I have. I've got two of these Lardazon Parfumer bottles. Very heavy glass and these lids are like just heavy, heavy. Um, I feel like you could really <laughs> knock someone out with these bottles, um, but just, yeah, luxuriously heavy. This one is uh, La Chasse au Papillon, which means the butterfly hunt, and this is just a very, very, very pretty springtime floral perfume. Got a lime blossom note in the opening that's very refreshing and light and bright. And then it has tuberose, jasmine, orange blossom. I often struggle with tuberose as a note, but here it works. I think the other flowers, especially the lime blossom, really lift it and keep it from becoming too heavy. This feels to me more like, you know, soft blossom petals as opposed to heavier, waxier greenhouse petals. So wonderful for spring, so uplifting, so natural, and just it's pretty. It is pretty, pretty, pretty. The next question is, which of your fragrances has the best memory associations for you? And that is actually already out here. This is the Eau de Rupert et Carlotte again. This reminds me of an old body shop perfume oil called Dewberry, which I wore in the 90s as a teenager in high school. Um, and then even took it to college with me. So I have all of those like early college memories, but it just really evokes, you know, my first kiss, my first crush, all that stuff. I don't know if any of the notes here actually match what Dewberry was. I, I tend to doubt that Dewberry had rhubarb in it, but my memory of it from, you know, 20 plus years ago, it shared this kind of juicy, sweet, tart quality um, that, as soon as I smelled a sample of this one, it just brought that rushing back. So that is a very nice memory to have. The next question, which of your perfumes is worth the hype? That would be for me, Gourmand Coquin from Guerlain, which comes in this, <laughs> and I had to clear out all of the perfume bottles here to make room for this presentation box that it comes in. It's a very lovely sort of leather-ish finish box. Let's just open that up. You've got your beautiful perfume bottle here. Um, so I've said before, this is the first perfume that made me think it might be worth spending, you know, over $200 on a single bottle of perfume. And um, I had a small decant for a really, really long time, and then finally bought myself a full bottle last year to celebrate a promotion. And I feel like this is, it's worth every penny. This is kind of, for a lot of people, a holy grail chocolate scent. It's a boozy, spiced, dark chocolate cacao with rose. It's sort of a powdery cacao some vanilla, some rum. It just all works. It's really well blended and adds up to something that is just so inviting and warm and it's a real treat and I think totally worth all of the hype and all of the money. The next question is which fragrance in your collection is not worth the hype? We've got Tom Ford Lost Cherry again. 
so on the one hand, I, I can understand it's a very well done cherry scent and it comes in this really beautiful, beautiful red toned bottle. Packaging is, you know, as nice as Tom Ford packaging is. Um, the performance is okay. Uh, I think the CR is decent. The longevity is, uh, it's okay. Nice to wear and delicious smelling, but uh, it doesn't really feel that unique or premium. But yes, I know there are a lot of people out there who feel like this is not really worth the money. I tend to agree. So Lost Cherry, not worth the hype. The next question is, what is your favorite fragrance from your favorite house? I'd probably say my favorite house is Guerlain. That's the one that I definitely have the most bottles from and deciding which one was my favorite was not easy you know this gourmand cocaine is definitely up there but I think I'm gonna have to go with aqua allegoria flora nymphaea so this was the first aqua allegoria that I bought I have considered this my signature scent um, it is a honeyed orange blossom and you know it's a fairly common note combination there are a lot of honeyed orange blossoms out there uh, but I think that combination can go a lot of different ways, can have a lot of different characters. A honey orange blossom that a lot of people are familiar with is Elie Sable Parfum, which is just a very different feel from this. Um, the Elie Sable is like sort of dressed up, professional, ladylike, at home inside an office in a city where this feels very natural, kind of barefoot outside in nature. Um, you know, I think of clean sheets hung out to dry in the sun, gently wafting in the breeze over a field of grasses and flowers. Maybe you hear some bees kind of buzzing around lazily and they're going into flowers. They've got a little bit of pollen on them. You're smelling some nectar, some blossoms. It's just very warm and sunny and natural and beautiful. There's maybe a little bit of honey in the air, but it's not heavy or syrupy. Again, sort of like the uh, Sicily scent, it kind of feels like it's coming from your skin. Like maybe there's a slight saltiness to it. Like maybe you're, you're lying in that sun and you're starting to sweat a little bit, but not in an unpleasant way. Um, just that sort of edge to the, the honey sweetness um, that's ever so slightly savory. And again, kind of like something beautiful coming out of your skin as opposed to something that you're wearing. So this is really, really, really beautiful. And um, one of my favorite, favorite perfumes. Final question, what is the most used fragrance in your collection? So lately I've really been spending a lot of time with samples and decants. I, I think that's maybe partly because I've been working from home for over a year, so Doing a lot of sampling during the day and um, thinking about it, my own collection has mostly been getting worn at bedtime more than anything else. Um, and for a bedtime perfume, I feel like I need something that's familiar so I'm not distracted by anything new or trying to learn about a perfume. I think the one that I've been wearing the most for bedtime is Moschino, I Love Love which is a little bit odd because this is a citrus perfume, which I think most people would consider more energizing as opposed to relaxing. I don't know, it's been working for me. I've been enjoying wearing it. It is uh, very crisp and sweet, very juicy, very cheerful orange grapefruit lemon. There are supposed to be some berries and flowers and wood, but really I live in the top notes there, that juicy, sweet citrus and by the time it gets to the base, I'm hopefully asleep. It's really enjoyable. If you don't want to wear it to bed, I think it's also sort of a peppy way to start your day. Nice, really refreshing perfume. For some reason or other, this has been one that I think I've been wearing the most and um, at bedtime. Um, also because my boyfriend farts in bed, so sometimes it's nice to have something sweet and strong that you can smell. On that note, <laughs> I think that is the end of the tag. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you've already filmed this tag or if you want to film it, let me know. I, I love these and um, would happily watch your video as well. All right.
拜。